loans give more returns. Get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. The key to quality and efficiency. Be a jewel. Professionalism is the jewel in the corporate crown. Refresh Sri Lanka for a civic-minded society. In association with 99X. LMD. The voice of business. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. Tonight on the forum, we're zooming in on going global. And with us, we have the CEO of Link Natural Products, Roshani Jaisundar Marais. It's very nice to have you on the show, Roshani. Thank you for the invite. Pleasure to be here. Prashari, to start off our discussion today, Sri Lankan businesses have been through a roller coaster ride in the past few years with a never ending uh, series of unfortunate macro events. However, we have seen that in the spirit of resilience, companies have looked at different alternatives and various strategies to survive and also grow, including going global. Um, in your assessment, what is the success rate of local brands and products uh, reaching and thriving in overseas markets? So I think before I get down to brands, I think um, Sri Lanka as a whole, our society, our people, and of course our companies have, you know, worked through challenges for the last so many decades, at least in, in my, my working career, I've always seen challenges in the form of something or the other. Uh, and and I think and I think it's true when lots of people say that we are resilient and that uh, our Sri Lanka is resilient, Sri Lankan people are resilient, and so are the companies. Coming to brands, uh, yes, uh, lots of brands have gone overseas. Some have worked, some have not. But when you talk about products and brands, I think there are two different things. You can have products and then you can have a brand. Uh, we just need to understand that, you know, we are doing two different things when we talk about uh, sending a product somewhere or a brand traveling somewhere. So if you talk about products that have gone global that we've had for centuries, I think in the form of tea, rubber, coconut, and lately apparel and a whole lot of other, uh, other products. Uh, and they go as an input to aid another brand or a product or something. And that's fine. And that's, that's a model that has worked for us for a long time. Uh, if you take tea, uh, you, we know of a company that has gone global, uh, really taken Sri Lanka to every corner of the world and built a brand. So it's quite commendable. And you know then that is possible, you know, to take it out as a brand too. While the others have uh, held the industry and held our exports together, and supported our exports by going global as a product, and that's fine too. Let's take apparel. Apparel did the same thing in the early days. Apparel, even now, I think apparel is an input to another brand, and they've done tremendously well and again held Sri Lanka up uh, in most times of need. So if you really look at apparel now, that even though they started that way, they've also gone to their own niche in the innovation, you know, technology, design space, because sometimes our scale is not the scale that we can have uh, like some other global players. So in order to circumvent that, people have found or brands or companies have found their own niche and try to travel in that niche. Something new that I see coming up is Sri Lankan cuisine. You know, there's a lot of talk about Sri Lankan cuisine uh, and right now, I think it's traveling quite well. Perhaps that's an opportunity we have. There's something that we can do. Uh, is there some business opportunity there? Is there something we can create uh, globally with that? Left to be seen. So traveling as a brand is quite difficult. It's not as easy as we think. 
it's expensive, takes time. Uh, sometimes even if you do that uh, in terms of volume, it's really small because you, you know, you're trying to build your brand and then you're trying to get your presence out there and not necessarily push volume. Uh, so it's a business call that the company needs to take. How you do that? You know, do you give it as a product, as input to someone else's brand or another product? Or do you, you know, take it out on your own uh, and take that more difficult and expensive road? But all in all, uh, some have tried and succeeded. Some have tried and uh, learned lessons. And yeah, so, and, and I think we continue to, to what shall I say, continue to trial uh, and try to take as many brands as possible outside, given our small market in, in, internally. Uh, we just need to try to go outside uh, to create more value. And Roshani, what are the most significant opportunities that you see in the world market for Sri Lankan brands and products? Yeah, so um, I think quite a few opportunities. We may want to pick and choose uh, in the, f- the field that we want to play in. Um, and I repeat, you know, get our own niche because of the scale that, you know, whether we are able to play that scale or not is a question. So therefore, we need to find our own niche. So if you go a little beyond the top tier exports that we know, and I said they held the country together uh, in the past decades, you know, in century, in the past centuries, in most cases, you know, in the case of tea rubber coconut. I think um, let's turn a little bit towards the more niche, more creative, you know, some of these industries with a little Sri Lankan identity, uh, which is somewhat gaining ground internationally. Uh, and I would like to mention here hand loan handicraft, uh, can we not find our own niche at a certain level in the market? Because th- those industries too, we can't scale to, you know, go all over the globe, but we certainly can find our niche and they may be, um, you know, we can, we can make them high value exports uh, to a, a particular niche market. So I kind of think that those have potential. I also think, uh, but it, it's a- craft it's handmade it's natural you know there's a big story behind it um can we not do something with Bati? again it's a niche can we not collaborate with the design house or several design houses uh, that goes for even hand loan and you know take this uh, craft out and and hold that sri lankan identity out there jewelry we, we've had it for a while uh, there's you know uh, absolutely gorgeous designs coming out from some SME companies can we facilitate them to take these out uh, value-added spices spices we've, we've uh, exported um, for centuries again uh, is there another form uh, can we graduate to something uh, beyond that commodity level cinnamon I don't need to say it here. You know, it's the best cinnamon we have. What have we done with it? Uh, and again, Sri Lankan cuisine. I kind of feel that there is some opportunity here that uh, that's untapped. Uh, and, you know, it's, some, it's just waiting to be taken out in the form of some, you know, creative business model by somebody. And the industry that I am in currently, Ayurveda, with the huge change that we are seeing in the world towards, uh, you know, moving towards wellness, natural, herbal, and Ayurveda itself, it's known now world over. People are turning towards alternate methods. Uh, with that, there's so much potential for Ayurveda, uh, for us to take Ayurveda out in a modern format in a format that's acceptable to the modern customer and the younger customer. You mentioned Gen Z. They wouldn't want to be, you know, making this uh, concoction at home uh, to a given recipe. So we must give it in a form that they can access it easily and also consume it easily. So I think there's opportunity for us to take that out in a form that's acceptable to the market. And looking at things from the other side, what are the possible bottlenecks uh, that are there for local companies when going global? So clearly, uh, one is, or the main uh, drawback is, it's absolutely expensive. You need to go and find out who your customer is, you know, whether he or she needs it, what is the need that you're fulfilling, that's the starting point. Just because you have a product and then you, you know, push it out, it won't move if there is no need for it or if you're not solving somebody's problem somewhere. 
So it's quite expensive to get to that, understand all that, and finally take it out. But if you get beyond that point, I think market access, the bigger companies are able to do that. But if you take the SMEs, they struggle with it. So if is there a way that we can facilitate market access to them? I think through FTAs, trade agreements, uh, where we give them access, maybe sometimes um, concessionary access for the first few years. And then when they are established, uh, they can, of course, travel on their own. Uh, that's how our garment industry came up. Garment industry uh, had, there was facilitation by way of quotas and they had concessionary access. And we have such a sophisticated industry today because of that uh, facilitation we had in the early years. So in the same manner, I feel that some industries need some help uh, by way of access. And if we can facilitate that, I think, you know, in a couple of decades, there will be mature, good industries that will uh, do well for Sri Lanka. Scaling is always a problem, given that, uh, you know, we are limited in resources. We are an island nation. There is so much that we have whatever resource we uh, look for, including human resources. So scaling is a problem, uh, but that's why we need to find our niche and see if we can play in that niche. And if you can graduate in the value chain a little further up, uh, even better, because then you know you're playing in a high value niche segment. But still, whichever way I feel we need to find our own niche, whichever industry it is, because, uh, you know, just saying going global and, you know, flooding, uh, trying to do that won't work. And we can't do that also. So marketing globally, navigating through approvals and regulatory processes, those are some of the other challenges. You need specific skills, knowledge and specific agencies to help you with all that. Uh, Some of it we have, some of it we don't have. So I feel like, you know, that's another challenge that some of our SMEs face and they don't know where to go to get that advice. And that's another problem. Uh, I repeat here, marketing globally is quite expensive. Building your brand globally, I mean, building a brand anyway is expensive and building it globally is even more expensive. But if you have an authentic story and a unique benefit that you're delivering, you know, if you're solving a particular problem of a customer, then the story itself will talk for you. I mean, we have a few examples like that that has really done well for Sri Lanka. That I feel is the way to go when we are trying to expand our footprint. Make sure you have a good story. Make sure you're solving a proper problem of a customer. Then that will, you know, the story will take you through and customers will become your fans and they will take your product further and further. Yeah, so that's, I think, uh, two or three challenges I feel that we have. It's time to take a short break. When we return, we'll resume our conversation on going global. Display your brand message on digital screens at Prime Locations. The largest digital advertising network in Sri Lanka. Emerging Media. You're mobile, and so are we. Gets me going. Grab the Light 87 app at the Apple App Store or Google Play now. 87.8 and 87.6 Island Wide. Light 87. Welcome back to the show. We're talking to the CEO of Link Natural Products, Roshani Jai Sundar Marias. Roshani, if I ask you, what are the main criteria? Uh, in your view, that a locally manufactured product or brand must meet to be marketable in the global market space? I think you answered the question yourself. I think it's quality quality and quality. There is no compromise on that. You're playing in the global platform and you're up against the big brands, the multinationals. So there is no two words about it. You know, you have to fight. Your product, once on a shelf or wherever it is, has to be able to talk for itself, market itself, you know, standing alone on a shelf alongside these other brands that, that are from multinationals or whoever it is. You have Your product has to be able to speak to the customer who is passing by that aisle. There's no other way. And then it has to be quality packaging and all of that. And naturally, these are given. Uh, it's not even, you can't, you can't even have a discussion on that. Uh, safety, 
sustainable uh, production facilities, ethical processes, all of that is a given. And, and that has to, uh, that's part of the course. You just have to provide those and be one with them if you are going global. And what regions or countries show the most promise for Sri Lankan products? So I think I'll take that question in a slightly different way because as, you know, whoever it is, whatever product it is, you are catering to a customer. You go where your customer is, irrespective of what country that is or what region that is. Uh, you go to the platform your customer is on or you go to the geography uh, where your customer is. And then, you know, you, you choose your markets that way because I don't think we should uh, fix ourselves uh, saying, okay, I'm going to the US, I'm going to Japan, I'm going to India or wherever. First, you just need to know where your customer is. And if, you, if you're lucky and if you're blessed to have a product that can, you know, serve the globe, so be it, like RT, for example. But nevertheless, otherwise, you need to just find where your customer is and then go. Having said that, I won't discount the fact that we're sitting next to the largest market, one of the largest markets in the world today. And it's a market that is difficult to crack. Uh, lots of Sri Lankan companies have tried to crack this market. And I'm talking of India. A lot of us have failed. So it's a difficult market, but if we can crack it in some way, the potential is so much there. Uh, and the region, just not uh, India only, if you take the South Asian region and going beyond even to East, East Asia, I think is the happening place now. And then, you know, it's all growth countries in those areas. Uh, but yeah, you have to, you know, look towards our big brother as one of the markets that we should try to crack at some point if you are catering to that consumer in some way. And also, if you look beyond the global slowdown, these countries are bound to bounce back at some point. We should be ready again, you know, to cater to those markets. So this time, perhaps we should use to, you know, get our products ready, get our services ready, and be ready to cater to these, you know, the traditional Western markets that we've exported to, uh, to cater that, to that consumer when they bounce back after this slowdown. When we talk of going global, we have to talk of e-commerce. And e-commerce has been an indispensable part of global retail. How can local businesses really tap this and really make use of this potential? So e-commerce, you know, kind of blurs borders. And that's, that's to our advantage, right? Uh, it can help us. Some of us have taken advantage of that. Uh, it can help the SMEs who struggle with uh, supply chain and logistics. I mean, I I'll give you an example. We put Samahan on Amazon, Amazon US, Amazon UK, Walmart online. Given that in those markets, majority of uh, retail happens uh, online and also the younger generation now, and that's a growth market, is buying online. So, you know, it's uh, th that's a platform that you have to look at. Uh, and ISMEs will uh, will do well to look at that positively and get on these platforms, get on e-commerce, whichever the platform it is. And I have to repeat again here, go to the platform where your customer is. You don't need to get on a platform for the sake of getting on it. But go where your customer is, whether it's social media, whether it's e-commerce, whatever the platform it is, go where your customer is, talk to them at their level. We can't decide which is easier or cheaper for us to be on or, or to use to communicate. We have to pick the one where the customer is and then go there and talk to the customer. So these, these channels and these platforms help you reach your customer efficiently and cheaper also. So again, for the SMEs, good channel to use to get your product out. And I think a lot of them are doing it, to be fair by it. Roshani, my next question to you revolves around LMD's campaign, Refresh Sri Lanka, which we launched to create a more civic-minded society. In your opinion, where does civic-mindedness really come in? Where should it come in when we talk of businesses going global? Again, that's a given, right? It's not just when you're going global. It's, it's something that we should have. That should be our foundation on which we build our businesses, whether you do it locally or globally. Uh, you're talking of our values here, right? So that's the foundation on which we build anything. So naturally, it, it should be j just a 
cornerstone of your business, irrespective of whether you are, you know, operating locally or globally. We're almost at the close of our conversation, but before we let you go, any concluding thoughts that you would like to share with our audience tonight? Yeah, so whether one is going global or otherwise, your product must cater to a customer need. I think that's the beginning of it. We can't do the product and then go looking for markets. You have to know what problem you're solving. And it's only through that. That's fundamental. And it's only through that that you can succeed. I said this before, you know, if you have an authentic story, if you have a unique value that you're delivering, Uh, to the customer, then the customer will do half your job. They will talk about it. It will go uh, from strength to strength uh, because your customer is now a fan and your customer is now an ambassador of your brand. So that's the best that you can have. And it's then that a brand comes alive. You know, it's at that point that a product will change to a brand. And I'd like to say that, you know, it's at that point that the brand really comes alive. I I like to think that way. And another thing is that coming out of this crisis, I think, um, like I said, we've we've gone through many challenges, but this is none like what we've gone through. Uh, But we have to come through this. I'm sure we will. Uh, One of the things we have to do is we need to export our way through this crisis if we are to help from our angle uh, in any way. Uh, and I'm sure we can figure something out, figure a way out if we get together and do this. So as one country, as one nation, and as one, as, as Sri Lankans, I think uh, we should approach it. And I'm sure we can do this if we get together. We've been talking to the CEO of Link Natural Products, Roshani Jaisundra Morayas. Thank you very much, Roshani. It's been very nice talking to you tonight. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me once again. And to all our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.